New study reveals number one dead simple strategy to add 48 feet to batted ball distance instantly. And guess what? It's not in the hips. Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this video, I'm going to reveal to you after doing a simple experiment using the Zet Baseball app, how I was able to increase average bat speed by 6 miles per hour, top out bat speed by 6 miles per hour, and average hand speed by 2 miles per hour. And hint, it has less to do with the hips and more to do with spinal engine mechanics. Soon we're going to go over the shocking experiment that reveals that it's not all in the hips. Then we're going to go over where power actually comes from and then the do's and don'ts. But first, let's go over the shocking experiment that reveals that it's not all in the hips. In the Buster Posey experiment, I wanted to apply the scientific method to seeing what would happen to bat speed if we had hitter A showing their numbers using the catapult loading system and propelling their swing via spine engine mechanics and springy fascia versus not showing the numbers and trying to drive the swing basically through the pelvis and the hips. Now I'm using the Zet Baseball app, it's on the end of my bat and it's corresponding via Bluetooth to the app on my phone. And I want you to do a little bit of background research. I'm gonna have a couple of video or links to the videos around this video here that goes into the research and study I've done. This is a video that I did on Dr. Serge Grakovetsky's work in the spine engine mechanics and Thomas Myers' work on anatomy trains. But basically my hypothesis is that the hitter that shows the numbers, uses the catapult loading system and their spine as an engine is going to have more bat speed than the hitter that doesn't and just tries to drive the ball with their hips. I urge you to go to the post, the original post. The link's gonna be below this video in the about section if you're watching this on YouTube to see the equipment I used and then how I set up the actual experiment. Now let's go into the data and the conclusion. So what happened in the experiment? These are snapshots from the Zet Baseball app that I took. I just separated them here. But the one on the left is not showing the numbers, one on the right is showing the numbers. As you can see clearly, I took 100 swings. I did not show in the numbers part of the experiment first and then the other last. And you can see that the average bat speed at 73, not showing the numbers, is definitely subpar from the 79 mile an hour average bat speed showing the numbers. The other thing I want you to take a look at is hand speed max here, not showing the numbers, 27 miles per hour, hand speed max, showing the numbers, 29 miles per hour. The last thing that I wanted you to note was the highest bat speed for not showing the numbers, landed at about 82 miles per hour, whereas the highest bat speed for showing the numbers landed at 88 miles per hour, plus six difference. Now there's a couple other things I want you to understand. I don't normally go out and take 200 swings off of a tee, so I was pretty tired once I got to the second part of the swing, which was showing the numbers, the last 100 swings or so off the tee. I eliminated forward momentum. So I paused at my landing position one to two seconds because I wanted to really show what showing your numbers, really how it can really add bat speed. What this shows is that connective tissue is much more important to a hitter, much more efficient, much better at promoting a friction-free, repeatable, powerful swing over muscle tissue. Muscle tissue needs constant fuel, connective tissue does not. So where does the power actually come from? We're gonna be looking at and analyzing Andrew McCutcheon. Now this is a couple swings from 2013 when he won the NL MVP award. He's a special case because he's 5'10", 190 pounds according to baseballreference.com. He's not a big guy by any means and he doesn't have a lot of weight on his frame or even size on his frame that he can get away with inefficient mechanics, although there are a couple things he's doing inefficiently that could really help him be a 30 to 40 home run guy a season. The point is, is that he has to do it right to survive, or he has to be efficient to survive. Now, before you get mad at me downgrading the three different things you probably heard, the power's all in the hips, load and explode the hips, and hips lead the way, we're gonna quickly kind of digest those before we move into this section of the video, where power being all in the hips it's not all in the hips and it's this cue is a hard thing to get away from when we're talking about conventional wisdom because what people forget is what happens or the brain actually doesn't know what to do with what happens above the pelvis what about the spine what about the shoulders you have this pelvis shoulder spine connection that the brain you tell it to load and explode the hips or that the power is all in the hips and the brain doesn't know what to do with that cue. What do I do with the shoulders? What do I do with the spine? Our body's driven by our spine. We call it 
Dr. Serge Grakovetsky calls it spinal engine mechanics. And the hips lead the way. This is something that Ted Williams said in his book, which is true. You see the hips lead the way, but not before we see counter rotation of the shoulders or showing your numbers before your front foot hits the ground. So actually, the shoulders initiate the swing by counter rotating and taking slack out of the system. We'll talk about in a little bit. All right. So let's get into the content of this video, this section of the video, the timing of torque. So I talked about this kind of counter rotation of the shoulders and when does this happen? We're going to go into this in brighter detail and a little bit more in this continuing in this video is from his beginning position here you can barely make out the two and then as the pitcher gets ready to deliver the ball Andrew McCutcheon picks his front foot up starts his fall forward the big number there as he kind of shows that to the pitcher and what he's doing again you can see this hips already starting to open you can see his shoulders are counter rotating the pelvis trying to take this what I call slack out of the system so torque doesn't just happen by load and explode your hips you have that move actually happens before you want it to happen so telling a hitter to load and explode your hips what does that mean the brain doesn't know what that means actually we need to load and explode the shoulders is kind of what we need to do the pelvis is going to open and, and it should open just slightly before that front foot's going to hit the ground but we want to actually block the shoulders from opening slightly before the the pelvis starts to open you can see here you can see the stretching going on where his shoulders are still blocked and closed but that pelvis is already starting to open so that should be that whole front side should be ready to open and should be open by the time landing happens but we need to be able to block those shoulders from opening now let's take a look at this springy x pattern the body loads from this stuff called fascia fascia is like cotton candy like material or web spider web like material it's what your bones and muscles float in and it's what gives your muscles their shape it's made up of mostly collagen and it's what Joan Rivers had in a lot of her face God rest her soul you could hardly see what kind of emotion she was giving you you couldn't see her smile you couldn't see her frown you couldn't see because collagen is very springy material it resists change in shape in order to load that material is we want to take now this is in probably about this phase of McCutcheon swing right now we're not getting the beginning where he actually goes and starts showing his numbers but he's taking this front shoulder and taking it down and in towards the back hip and this back shoulder is actually moving away from the front hip so we're seeing this if you think about an X pattern on a shirt instead of a S for Superman we see this kind of X pattern and we'll see one leg of the X in order to load this material one leg of the X will get shorter which is this for a hitter the front shoulder to the back hip during the load phase or the counter rotation phase of the swing and you'll see the back shoulder and the front hip kind of move away from each other and on his back side the opposite's happening so this this leg's getting shorter here on the front it's going to get back it's going to get longer on the back the same line that traces to the back hip and then this one getting longer in the front is actually going to get shorter in the back so this is how we load that material I call this the springy X pattern and again I mentioned that what this does is it's taking slack out of the system it actually gives a hitter more time to make it make an educated decision on when to swing on on what pitch we're getting what location and what speed is happening it gives us more time because we're taking slack out of the system and as the experiment showed that it increases overall bat speed average bat speed by six miles per hour top out bat speed by six miles per hour and average hand speed by two miles per hour let's go into a couple of the questions that i get on how to actually apply where this power comes from in showing the numbers so we just figured out where the power actually comes from now let's go over some do's and don'ts some questions that i want to answer about showing the numbers the first one that i usually get is when do we show our numbers and what I do is I give three different guidelines for my hitters and let them kind of figure it out on their own the first one is showing the numbers from the start now this is probably the most beginner one this is the one that I would teach younger kids seven eight nine years old so showing the numbers from the start before the front foot even gets picked up a couple hitters that you'll see do this is Josh Donaldson and Hunter Pence so you'll see them they'll be kind of showing their numbers from the start they're showing the pitch of their numbers and then you'll see them pick their front foot up and just hold that position or block the shoulders from opening showing their numbers to the pitcher the next way would be more like a Robinson Cano Andrew McCutcheon and and Mike Trout. This would be showing the numbers when the hitter picks up the front foot. So you would see this squared up view from the pitcher's view of the hitter and then you see as they pick their front foot up you're gonna see them go right into showing the numbers. The last way in which I don't recommend unless you have more of an advanced hitter or a hitter that maybe 
takes that back elbow and races past the hands, gives us more of a bat drag position. Because the problem is that the shoulders are going too fast, going faster than the hips, so we have to slow them down, or at least get him going, get him going the opposite direction while the hips are going the other direction. So this option would be showing the numbers when the hitter falls forward during their fall. Good example of this is Dustin Pedroia. So what you would see is this kind of square position. You'd see the lifting of the foot, and then you would see showing the numbers as the hitter fell forward. So this answers the question of when we show our numbers. The next question that I often get asked when teaching a hitter to show their numbers is losing vision with the back eye or losing vision in general. Now what we want our hitters to do is we want them to show their numbers enough to where they can still pick up with both eyes the release point or somewhat close to the release point. If they go too much, they show their numbers too much, a quick test you can give them is to close the front eye and now if they can't pick up the pitcher or the release point or anything like that, they're showing their numbers too much and they need to show it just a little bit less. or crane their head a little bit more in order to pick up with the back eye. Hitting's a little different because we're hitting an unknown pitch, we're hitting a pitch that we don't know the speed and we don't know the location. It's a little different than something like shot put where they're going to use the same principles. They're going to show their numbers just as well but they're going to show their numbers to where they're going to lose vision with their head because they've done that throw hundreds of thousands of times. So it's a little different in hitting. We're hitting an unknown pitch, speed, and location. Okay, hey, the next question or do and don't that we talk about when I go over showing the numbers with my hitters is what tends to happen is they'll land, they'll start showing their numbers, but they'll land with their shoulders closed and their front foot closed or their front leg closed. And what tends to happen is that front shoulder will fly open because if the pelvis isn't ready to open before the hitter hits the ground, then that front shoulder brain's going to be like, I got to get that barrel to that ball, so I got to get that front shoulder to move open. So what happens is when the pelvis is closed, then it, both of them have to open at the same time, and that's a problem. So I did another experiment using the Zet Baseball app. I called it the Alex Gordon experiment, and what I did was I landed closed versus open, and what I found, I did the same 100 swings landing closed and 100 swings landing open, and what I was able to do when I landed open, or 45 to 70 degrees with the front foot, I tend to talk about the cue of having a flashlight on the front thigh and having it open versus close, like pointing at the tee or, or the soft tosser, having it open more for a righty just to the right of the pitcher and lefty the opposite. But what I found was I was able to maintain higher levels of bat speed when I landed open and I was able to increase my top out bat speed by another two miles per hour when I was open and not closed. So that pelvis needs to be ready to go once or just slightly before that front foot's going to hit the ground. Now basically this video and this do and don't is all about landing open at the lower half and close with the top half. I talk about blocking the shoulders off, not allowing them to open up too soon. So blocking the shoulders, keeping the shoulders closed, the lower half stays open. I hope you learned a lot in this video. Please post any questions or comments below, but make sure we're swinging smarter by moving better.